All right, welcome back. All right, everybody, I kind of like this lesson. Uh, it's turning repeating decimals into fractions. Now, we know how to turn decimals into fractions, fractions into decimals. Uh, like if I told you what is the fraction for 0.5, you would say that is 5 tenths. So 5 over 10, simplify it down to 1 half. If I asked you what was the decimal for 1 fourth, you would say 0.25. But what about repeating decimals? Like what is the fraction for 0.4? 444444 that goes on forever. Well, there's a neat process you can do to be able to answer this question. Well, if you're like most people, you have no idea what this fraction is going to be. And so we're going to call it x, a number we don't know. And then if I do something kind of interesting, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. That gets me a new formula. 10x equals 4 times 4.444444. And what if I subtract out the original equation now? Well, 10x minus 1x is 9x. And when I subtract out all these 4444444s, they become 0000000s. So I end up getting 9x equals 4.000000. Simple one step algebra, divide by 9, divide by 9. And the fraction that I didn't know is actually 4 ninths. If you don't believe me, take a calculator. Go 4 divided by 9, see what decimal you get. Okay? So let's have you guys try one, or just look at one again. If I have 0.5555555, well, I have no idea what fraction that is, so I'm going to say x equals all these 5s. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. When I do that, what it does is it slides the decimal point one spot for me, which is nice because now I have 10x and I have 5.555555. If I subtract out the original equation, notice I still get 9x's, and now all these 5's subtracting become 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, And so now what I do is divide by 9, and I get my answer. Do you notice the pattern? Good. All right, can we make it a little trickier? Yeah. Not so bad, though. What if I have two numbers repeating? Well, I have no idea what that fraction is going to be. However, what if I multiply both sides by 100? If I multiply both sides by 100, what that does is it slides this decimal to two spots. And I get 100x equals 25 point 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. You guessed what I'm going to do now. I'm subtracting out the original equation. That gets me 99x on one side, and all these 25s become 0000000. zero, 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 zero. One step algebra. Noticing any patterns? There are some in here. Why don't you try this one? I'm going to help you out. Multiply both sides by 100. Remember what you end up getting. OK, I'm back. So I get 100x equals 18.18181818. And then when I subtract out my original equation, I'm going to get 99x's, and all these 1818s, 18s, 18s, 18s are going to become 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, So when I divide by 99, in this situation, though, I had to remember to simplify. And once again, if you don't think I'm right here, please do me a favor. Take the calculator and divide it and see what you get. All right, two last ones. Notice. The th only the 3 is repeating. So this is 0 0.2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So I only multiply by 10 because I only want to move the decimal one spot because I only want those 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3s becoming 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0s. Once again, don't believe me? Check it with a calculator. Let me show you another one just so you can see how it's done. The more you do these, the easier it gets, trust me. But one number being repeated, multiply by 10. Two numbers being repeated, multiply by 100. Three numbers being repeated, 1,000, and so on. So when I subtract out, get a nice number. All right. You guys, if you got questions on this, you're not alone. So make sure to ask your teacher, and have fun.